All right, everybody, welcome. We are going to talk about the TCA cycle today. Um, up here, I have just a little uh, a little roadmap of where we've been and where we're going. Um, so we started out with one molecule of glucose. One molecule of glucose. Where did that actually take us? Well, we converted it into two molecules of pyruvate. We have two molecules of that. That converted, got converted by pyruvate dehydrogenase uh, into um, two molecules of acetyl-CoA. Two molecules of acetyl-CoA um, enter into the infamous TCA cycle. So that's where we've been, that's where we're going, and then eventually we'll end up at the electron transport chain, also known as oxidative uh, phosphorylation, but We'll get there. So, TCA cycle. What else is it called? It's also known as the Krebs cycle. Uh, TCA stands for tricarboxylic acid cycle. Um, also, it's known as the citric acid cycle. All the same thing. Um, a few things about it. Okay, let's dive into it. TCA cycle. Not G. Let's see if I can spell. TCA cycle. All right, this is going to be a good one, everybody. Uh, hold on to your pants. We're going to dive in. So what is it? Well, we use, it's used by aerobic, I'm actually just going to talk about it. It's going to be used by aerobic organisms. It's going to convert that acetyl-CoA into ATP, uh, both by directly creating ATP and also by creating some more IOUs. So like an IOU is something that is created now, but it'll pay out later. Um, the body can't actually use these IOUs until they're cashed out. And they get cashed out in the electron transport chain uh, later on down the road. But for right now, the body creates a whole bunch of IOUs, they'll go to the bank, they'll cash them, they'll be rich with ATP. So that's what it actually does, is the TCA cycle creates a whole bunch of things. And what it does is it turns one acetyl-CoA molecule into a whole bunch of stuff. So let's see, three NADHs, and these are the IOUs that I was talking about. It also creates a less potent IOU, that's going to be one um, FADH2. So three high potent IOUs, one lesser, kind of like less inexpensive IOU. Um, it's going to also create two carbon dioxide molecules, and then also it's going to directly create a GTP. Also, I kind of clinically correlate to a uh, ATP, so one GTP, um, which for our sake is going to be equal to an ATP function. It's a triphosphate, triphosphate, uh, just attached. So, and also we're going to have a byproduct of of a CoA, um, this is going to be our net reaction. So I just want to walk you through really quick. It's the TCA cycle, 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 think bicycle, think circle. It's going to be circular. So when I say I mean, before we've had a reactant and a product, now we just have a big cycle. And kind of how it goes is you'll see it written in a clockwise fashion. It's always going in a clockwise circle. And near the top is where your acetyl-CoA feeds in. So we've already gone from glucose to create a whole bunch of acetyl-CoAs. This is where it feeds in. And like I said, we're going to go in the clockwise direction. So it's going to feed in. Let's begin. We're going to create all this stuff with every acetyl-CoA molecule. Actually, I want to take a step back before I go in. Oh man, I can't wait to dive in. Uh, I'm rearing to go. But let's take a look here. Two carbon dioxide molecules. Each carbon dioxide molecule has one carbon. And since there's two of them, there's, that's two carbons. Two Cs, two carbons. So what does that actually mean? It means, oh, oh, I see here. We lose two carbons. None of this stuff has a carbon in it. But here's our carbon. Remember that acetyl-CoA is a two-carbon molecule. So for every crank of this cycle, one crank is a full circle. Every crank, 
we lose two carbons in the form of carbon dioxide, but we put in a two carbon molecule. So actually our carbon balance is the same. We start with the number of carbons that we ultimately end up with. When we put two in, we'll get two out in a different form. So acetyl-CoA is a two carbon molecule, and it's gonna go in. All right, let's do it. I can't wait. Let's, uh, let's dig in. So like I said, we always start uh, near the top and we work our way in a clockwise fashion. So acetyl-CoA. Whether you're doing this on your own or for a test, um, always start with acetyl-CoA. That's always going to be your starting molecule. And then also, your very end, once you've gone through your whole cycle, the very last, uh, the very last molecule that you're going to end up with is with OAA. Uh, that's going to be oxaloacetate. I should probably write it out. Oxalo oxaloacetate. Um, now that I wrote it out, I will abbreviate it because the TCA cycle can get busy as well. So OAA. So what happens? Well, we're going to feed in our acetyl CoA. We're going to mix that with our OAA, which is the very end of our cycle, and we're going to get a new molecule, and that's going to be citrate. Citrate. Oh, how am I going to do this? Let's do it in the move. Oh, let's, let's tie this back. Uh, no, let's not tie it back. Um, okay, so we've got an OAA and acetyl-CoA merge those two together, we get our first molecule of the TCA cycle, that is going to be citrate. What enzyme actually converts this? So let's see, what color should I do? I'm going to do red for my enzymes, and I'm going to put those on the inside of this circle. Um, I'm not going to circle them or anything because it'll be busy. Just remember that red minus the acetyl-CoA is going to be my enzymes. So I'm going to have citrate Synthase. Citrate synthase is going to be the enzyme. It's going to synthesize citrate using these two molecules. Um, it's going to be our first enzyme encountered. So next, let's see, I'm going to keep this all color-coded. We're going to be creating a new molecule using the um, aconitase, uh, how do you spell it? I can spell it, aconitase, aconitase enzyme. Yeah, that is going to kind of rearrange the citrate using a conotase and create iso isocitrate. Not very important. Um, it's just going to rearrange everything. Um, I'm actually going to move the camera just to make sure you can see everything. Okay. So we have OAA citrate and isocitrate. Next. I want you to start the next molecule that we're about to make. Let's see, I need a blue. We're going to create alpha ketoglutarate. And that's my alpha ketoglutarate. AKG, alpha ketoglutarate. We are going to use an enzyme called isocitrate dehydrogenase. So we have our isocitrate gets converted into alpha ketoglutarate using isocitrate dehydrogenase. This is actually going to kick out a lot of stuff. It's going to kick out our first molecule of NADH. Awesome. So like I said before, in the net reaction, we're going to get three NADHs overall. Um, also, I said we were going to kick out two CO2s. This is going to be where our first CO2 gets kicked out. So two carbon molecule, this is our first carbon of that molecule that gets kicked out. Okay. Repair, did a little damage there. So where do we go from here? We're moving on in the cycle. Okay, so our alpha ketoglutarate gets converted into succinyl-CoA. Succinyl-CoA using the enzyme alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So again, I'm going to abbreviate alpha ketoglutarate, again, abbreviating pretty much everything, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Uh, 
I said we should start, we should start. Let's also start this one, because why, if you ask? It does the exact same thing. So it's going to take an AD, it's going to feed it in, it's going to kick out an NADH, and a CO2. Well, that's awesome. We've already accounted for two of our three NADHs, two of our two carbon dioxides, but we still have a little bit more to go. I said we also had another NADH, an FADH2, and a GTP um, that we need to find. So, where do we get that? Well, uh, we have another reaction. So succinyl-CoA goes to succinate. All right, so we've see kind of our circle going on here. So this is why it's the cycle. So we've got succinyl-CoA to succinate using succinyl-CoA synthase. Succinyl CoA synthase. Oop. Synthase. Sorry, it's kind of getting a little crowded. So, what actually happens here? Well, we're actually going to kick out our first and only GTP. So, we took a GDP diphosphate and created it to a triphosphate. That's our energy. Like I said, that's pretty much equal to an ATP. So, awesome. So, we have one molecule of succinate now, what do we do with that molecule of succinate? Succinate dehydrogenase enzyme is going to convert it. Succinate dehydrogenase enzyme. It's going to convert it into our fumarate. Our fumarate. Fumarate. All right. This is also an important reaction because it's going to create our lesser, it's our lower yield IOU note that we're going to create. So we're going to take an FAD molecule and create an FADH2. Awesome. So let's see, let's do a little math. Three NADHs, we're still missing one. We've got our carbon dioxides, we've got high yield ATP or GTP, and then we've got our FADH2, so we're only missing one thing. But we've got two more steps to get from OAA and fumarate to connect those two. So, for time's sake, or for space's sake, I'm going to do that just so I know how much to work with. We've got two more reactions that we have to get through. Uh, fumarate is going to get converted into malate. So, malate. Another good, good bit of information via fumarase enzyme. Fumarase. Fumarase enzyme. All right, so fumarate to malate, um, not very high yield. I mean, nothing gets kicked off in the middle. It's just rearranging the molecules within each structure. So um, it's going to rearrange the molecules. Finally, malate dehydrogenase is going to convert malate dehydrogenase, converting malate into OAA. This is where we get our last. We have one, two NADHs. We need one a third one, so let's kick off another right there. NADH. That's our final and third one. So NAD gets converted to NADH, and that is our full cycle. Wow, isn't that pretty? That is beautiful. That just gives me goosebumps almost. So what are we looking at? Well, we're, let's, uh, let's synthesize what we just drew and uh, try and tie everything back together. So let's keep it cranking. Let's keep this cycle cranking. Um, we've got a two-carbon molecule, acetyl-CoA, gets combined with oxaloacetate, OAA, using this enzyme to create a citrate. Awesome. So now we're in the cycle, we're rearing to go, let's do it. We've got aconitase, which is just going to rearrange that citrate into an isocitrate. That isocitrate is our first molecule that's a super high yield uh, enzyme, isocitrate dehydrogenase. We've also got another high yield one. Well, look at that. They're the same thing. They do the same function. NAD to NADH. They kick out a CO2 in the meantime. We're losing one carbon. We're losing two carbons. Well, that's great because we fed in two carbons. We're losing what we gained. It's a cycle. It can keep going. It's a cycle. So we've got isocitrate dehydrogenase 
alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. These are super important steps. Always on the test. No matter what your test is, no matter what level you're at, these are great enzymes for testing purposes. Um, then we finally get a succinyl CoA that gets converted to a succinate using this enzyme. However, the important thing to note is GTP is created, which is equal to an ATP. This is our direct energy. Right now we're creating these IOUs. The TCA cycle is actually going to create some GTP in the process. Uh, we get left with succinate converted to a fumarate. In the process, we get a little lower yield um, IOU note. We can cash it in at the bank still, it just won't pay as much in ATP. So FADH2, you get one FADH2 per crank. Uh, fumarate to malate, malate gets converted to OAA, kicking off another and our final uh, NADH. So let's take a look at it. We've got our carbons feeding in, we're spitting out those carbons, and then once we get kind of past this cycle and creating a little high yield, a high energy molecule, we're left with the lower yield molecule and from here we're trying to convert it back into our starting molecule which we can crank out another crank and another crank and another crank and keep it going as long as we keep feeding in these awesome acetyl-CoA molecules which can get created by glycolysis but it can also get created by amino acid breakdown and fat breakdown uh, as well. It's, the important thing to note is it's a two carbon molecule. Acetyl-CoA is two carbon, so we can break down amino acids, we can break down sugars like carbohydrates, and finally we can break down into two carbon fats. So those long fatty tails, that's my fatty tail for my fatty acid, you can break those down into two carbon snippets and once you have those two carbon snippets, you can feed those in as acetyl coas and make a whole bunch of energy. That's why fat is so high energy. It's a whole bunch of these fatty chains, and you just snip them into little two, two carbon bits. They fit in excellent to this cycle. So the TCA cycle found in aerobic organisms. Uh, let's write that in here, because I can't emphasize it enough. Oh, let's see if I can spell it. Aerobic organisms, awesome. That's a neat. Um, anaerobic organisms don't do this. They take that pyruvate that we created in the uh, in the glycolysis pathway. They don't use the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme to create acetyl CoA. No, 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 no. They take that pyruvate. They do a much less low yield uh, pathway through it, and uh, and then they get less energy um, as a result. So. This TCA cycle is for aerobic organisms, and they're going to feed all these materials. So, I mean, in the glycolysis pathway, in the lactate dehydrogen, or not lactate, uh, uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme, we created some NADH. Um, now we created 1, 2, 3 NADH and FADH2, and we also created some direct energy. Body loves direct energy, it makes it easy. But these are the high yield ATP notes. Let's cash them into the bank. Let's do it. Let's, let's move on over to oxidative phosphorylation and, uh, and also we can talk about the electron transport chain. The same thing, synonymous. Electron transport, oxidative phosphorylation. Let's do it.